So, Rory and Maul, they had an interesting conversation um, on their last episode of the podcast, and it stemmed from Danny from the stop. And I see what you're doing, Danny. <laughs> you out there being an agent of chaos, pushing these boys together. I like it. I respect it. But it was in, it was interesting because I always love when Rory and Maul have conversations that you know for a fact they've never had off camera. And, like, you see that look on Rory's face like, oh. This is the nigga who I'm dealing with. It's almost like when you like chilling with a girl and she told you she got like a blowjob in church. And you're like, I mean, she, she gave a blowjob in, ch- in church. And you're like, whoa, whoa, OK, well, you're not the girl who I thought you were anymore. <laughs> but that's how it was. So what did, what happened was Danny did an interview with uh, Rory. So, again, shout out to that. Uh, and in the interview, Rory from Court the Mall misspoke and said that he texted somebody and they didn't respond back to him. And they left him on red. Mall, Mr. Pride was not having that. He cleared that story up. But in the same token, he also said he would never hit anybody up to go on their show, which sparked a big conversation in the group because it looked weird. Whereas, like, we're podcasting. One of the things of getting a bigger audience of podcasting is reaching out to your peers and generating that engagement. Mm-hmm. Having them come on your show, you going on their yeah. show. Like, we even, like, we're planning on talking. I'm not going to release too much, but we're talking about going on some people's shows too to try to help build our brand. And I went out and I asked them. I just sent a DM and said, hey, I, there's nothing doing wrong with it. And that's why I was just wondering, like, what was your thoughts on after we just both listened to the conversation in this entirety? Do you, what do you feel about Maul and Rory and, and, this, and that take that, they, that Maul basically had? I think Maul has always annoyed me with his very, like, you can tell that he. His his prototype of a man is constructed in a specific way and he has to behave in a very specific set of of behaviors like he has to fall into that so maul is like the overly cool nigga like he's too concerned with being cool so he doesn't enjoy life that's what he gives me and that's what he's given me since he was on the joe budden podcast like he's just like laid back too cool for school but you actually come off as lazy and unmotivated and not passionate at all which this falls in line with you not wanting to um, reach out to other podcasters for not wanting to look lame just makes you look lazy, unmotivated and unpassionate. No, for sure. Because and that's the way reason why I hate it, because I don't think he's lazy. I think he, he puts the effort into the stuff that he wants to put the effort into and that he thinks is cool and fly. And I don't think that's a problem with it. But I do see where, like you say, like that's a part of the game. Like, OK, even on the old show I used to do when we first started, one of the guys on there knew a pretty relevant Instagram person in the area. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these folk. This folk had like millions of followers on Instagram. Yeah. And that once they ever talked to them about helping us with the show, coming on the show, trying to give us a look or anything. And his main concern was the same thing. Oh, I don't want to look lame. And it's like, nigga, you don't, you got 400 followers. Nigga, you lame. Like, what are you talking about? We, you try, are lame. we are in the game of trying to get <laughs> not be lame anymore. And yeah. that's what you got to get other folks to give you a look. And like you said, it just comes off as that because it, in my mind, that's what it came off to. It's like, oh, you just either lay, you either lazy, or you're scary, and you don't want to get uh, what you call. There's somebody I went to elementary school with. I don't want to put his name out because I talked about my elementary school here. I don't want to, you know, show show him up <laughs> a little bit. But it's somebody I went to elementary school with who's a gangster rapper, and I tried to get him on the show, and that nigga left me on red. It wasn't no nothing embarrassing to me. It was just like it is what it is. It's the game. Yeah, it was elementary school. Like that was not long ago. It's okay. It was middle school too, but <laughs> that's the kind of uh, the school we was. It was like a all encompassing. Oh yeah, school. I went to one of those too. So, but no, it to me, I just think that it's just crazy. But I just, I just find it so hilarious when Rory just sits there and like he even makes it up. Like he's like, our pride is the same, but like the way we execute it is totally <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just see where it was just like, when you just find out Shorty was just the biggest smut in the world, and you just like, what? I thought you was my yeah. queen, but you for the team. <laughs> <laughs> the worst feeling the ever. Team. The worst feeling ever. But I just hope that he can kind of, because it was funny. After like, after Rory said the same thing five times, Maul was able to acquiesce. Because Maul was like, bro, I'm not talking about going to somebody you don't know. Rory was like, I'm not talking about going to somebody you don't know, somebody you're not familiar. I'm saying like your man's, like Gilly Wallow Nori, like what, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. And then he's like, well, okay, well if it's somebody I'm cool with, we didn't had the conversation prior, which Rory already used that as a prerequisite. And it was like, I, I think okay, I could do that then. But it's like, bro, <laughs> you be proving all of uh, I, Joe's allegations correct. I don't like Maul as a podcast personality. I don't think he's the type of personality that you can 
gravitate towards and like feel um connected to because he don't want you to feel connected to him he wants to he wants to other himself he wants to feel above people he wants to feel like he's cooler than you he's hooder than you he's more exclusive than you that's the feel that he gives and that's not somebody that is going to gain popularity with the masses because you don't want to appeal with the masses you want to be a special unique nigga and the last token i'll say on this or the last point i'll i'll, I'll point on this one is that it honestly feels like that is really the true example of what crabs in the barrel mentality is. Like they try to like, you know, I think if anything, Jay Z, Steve Style, all those guys that were in that Rockefeller, uh, New York adjacent lane, that is truly what y'all legacy are is. Is this ideology of being too cool or not, uh, within you know, so you create this mindset amongst people that they don't want to really build community. Mm-hmm. Like if y'all being for real with it, that's really what a lot of these guys built and y'all try to call anybody who criticized y'all that crabs in a barrel when it's like no nah, that's what y'all built is crabs in a barrel for everybody and then y'all just try to call out you know whoever doesn't uh, rock with what the way you rocking with it yeah and that shit's just lame 